Hey, Bryn. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? But are you back in New York or is it Vegas? No, no, I'm back. Yeah, I mean, I came back on Friday. So, all right, after Black Hat. How was that? That's good. Yeah, I think the, the Arsenal, the Guac Talks went well. Uh, we got we got to present twice, so that that was good because some people backed out, I guess. So, <laughs> uh, interesting. So the, second, okay. the second session went well. So, a lot of interest and all that kind of stuff. So, it was good. Nice. Um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But <clears throat> I saw. I, uh... I was... Oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to talk about something I saw on Twitter about Black Hat, but I don't think. What would you see? I, I saw this thing where, like, if you were in the hotels um, on some of these big events, they had, like, they require, like, security to go, like, look at the rooms or do, like, you had to do kind of, like, mandatory um, um, room um, room cleaning every day so that they could make sure like nothing fishy was going on <laughs> interesting okay i, <laughs> I didn't yeah, encounter I anything sure. like that so. yeah maybe it's just someone else huh. hello hey Mia. Need to get a room for that that, that meeting so Marco doesn't have to squat somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna mention it. It doesn't let me modify the invite. It says the organizer haven't given guests permission to to do things but who's if i'm not the organizer who it is oh uh, i think mihai or is, is it mihai sorry like i'm wondering who created this oh maybe it's me okay the one between the three of us so you created it okay all right i know about all the books that we can get yeah i think mike says he's gonna join a little bit late should we get started oh let's wait one moment i think it's started i think okay let me make sure Yeah, thanks, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, I guess I could start off with the, the usual spiel. So um, this meeting is being recorded. This is a co-op maintenance meeting. It'll be uploaded on, on um, LFX uh, made public. Uh, also, by participating in this meeting, we are abiding by the Nails Foundation and open to the co-op conduct. And also by um, you know adhering to antitrust um, law, so more details on the open access for that if you want to find out more. No, yeah, let's, I guess we can get started. Why is it so hard to add a row to this table? <laughs> I don't know why the table keeps getting smaller and smaller. Also, I feel like it's. <laughs> oh, looks like uh, looks like Ben took care of it. Never mind. I was like, <laughs> the can't get this table getting table to sm- work. The table getting smaller. I saw it in other open access <sighs> meetings too. It's summer. It's DevCon, so people are less joining. 
Mm. Okay. Uh, no, so the I was Korean... thinking of... Sorry. No, no, I was just saying, I thought it was like, the idea is that you accumulate a list of people and they just keep marking access. So I, I don't know how actually do that thing's possible, but... Um, sorry, Pop, I interrupted you. Uh, the community meeting is this week. Yes. yes. On the 15th. So, um, items for the agenda, we should probably work through an agenda. Um, yeah, so I saw I, the... Sorry, go ahead. So I know... Um, so, Marco, I think, can you take a look at the 2064 that Nathan made up? That's that's using REST API to get the latest latest SBOM. So he's going to add, um, uh, he has an issue open for it, but after this, he's going to, I think, once this merges, he has another PR ready that will search for all the vulnerabilities and the license information off from that, basically the SBOM. So you can provide that information. So we yep. have the rest. So I can yeah, take a look at that. Yeah, if you review that, and then we can get that merged. Um, I think he has another one pending. So I think we can show that off. That'd be something interesting. Like, I think, you know, what's an easy way without using the CLI? Like, what's an easy way of getting this, you know, license information and vulnerability information? I think that'd be very good to show off in whatever form it is. Um, and then, yeah, we can be like, yeah, it's going to get merged soon. So that should be something we can include. This sounds good. Be going home. What else? Did we show up clearly defined? We did not, I think, right? Okay, so that's, yeah, we can do that piece also. And clearly defined um, integration. Is this going to be Jeff? Uh, yeah, it can be me. I mean, I did it, but Jeff wants to take oh, it. That's okay. fine too. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure who, who, who was working on this one. All right, I'll yeah, push me pop there. Well, I mean, if if we want somebody else presenting, you can Jeff. I think that'd be good, right? <laughs> it's like I can't um, present every single time, but it's up to you. I can do do we have to do a demo? <laughs> I guess probably. Okay. Yeah, I think we. I, I can, how about you talk through it? Okay, sure. Uh, and then I, I can do a presentation, like some, you know, like, yeah. So, get some variety in. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> so, uh, all right. What What else is there? Anything else? I wonder whether we want to talk a bit about the um, the user journey interview stuff we were. Yeah. Thinking about doing and see whether anyone wanted to participate in that. Yep. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Um, is I think you had like a doc written out also, right? Some questions and stuff. So I think yeah. that'd be good to show off. I don't know what the what the Ben or Abhishek was to do, present that that one. I'm fine with letting you do it, or if, uh, we can ask Abhishek if he'll be there. Yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah, I think, let me ask Abhishek whether he wants to do it, because I think he, he will be doing the first interview. So I think it's also um, good that him need that, that we can chime in. <clears throat> Did we um, talk about the changes to the contribution letter that we added on the, the documentation stuff yet in the community call?
What was the question? Like, have we talked about the changes we made to the contribution at the at the community call around we, the documentation? And... We talked about them when they were in a proposal. We haven't talked about them as like a follow up to say this is now in place. I feel like that's at least worth a worth a shout out. Yeah, it works for me. Yeah. Also, maybe we should probably talk about this. Is like the there was a breaking change now in existing ant databases. So if anybody has an existing ant database, it's gonna there's a breaking change, right? I had to create that uh um, like a manual uh, update. Like over here. So we can probably talk about this. Yeah, so there's a, oops. Um, okay. no. Yeah, so because we removed dependency, uh, dependency to only be a package version, right? Um, that costs, some like if there if you have an existing end database right, and if you're like, the migration will, migration will, work like auto migration will work, but then it's gonna have you're gonna have in your database now the dependency tree, you're gonna have empty fields in there. So basically, package like let's say it's at the package name level currently, and it's gonna if it's now only a package version, everything gets you know everything gets messed up, and you you have a row or or. Uh, uh, yeah, you have a column of empty package versions, right? Because they could be, because they were at the package name level originally. So what needs to happen then is that what the, the script does here is that it goes through, it makes the, it finds the associated package version from based off the package name and the version range information that was originally there in the, in the uh, original table for his dependency. And then finds a package version and, and appends that into the, into the de is dependency wherever it needs to be. And then after that, you can run the migration to be so that it, that package version in is dependency should never be uh, not null, right? Can never be null. Do we know what the error is that they would run into if they, they had this issue? It's, uh, so the error I can't yeah I can I can I can show an example maybe off of it in the demo but basically what happens is like if you try to re-ingest an existing S bomb like let's say you've ingested an S bomb before you try to re-ingest the same one then it's going to run into like oh it can't find the relationship in the database because now it doesn't match and all that kind of stuff so if you ingest new things that's not an issue because it's going to create you know new 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 uh, new items in its dependency uh, table. But if you ingest the same S bomb, it's going to try to refine the identity, the ID for the is dependency, and it's going to fail based off that. So what the script that you know, script does is basically, you know, yeah, get the get the populate the package version field on its dependency and refactor the ID, the UUID on its dependency because it, because that ID is based off the aggregate of the the different fields together, and has to replace that so that the uh, it has to get replaced so that when it rechecks again, it's going to find find that based on the ID. Yeah, it's a little bit weird, but it, it works out at the end. But yeah, this, it is a breaking change. So I don't think anybody's using it. So I, I know Guidewire is probably, it's still using Orango, but if anybody else is using it in production or anything else like that, if you start the database from new, this is not an issue. But if you have an existing one, which was, I think it's worth mentioning. Okay. And I can yeah I can talk I can talk through it and all that kind of stuff. It looks like we have quite a list. I feel like this should be sufficient. Um, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. I think it may be good. Um, I think the next time we chat with, um, we chat with Alistair to maybe see whether he has something to present to the community meeting. So, yes, I, I still need to rewatch the maintainer call from last week. I heard he 
you know, he, he gave a lot of good feedback uh, in terms of like some changes and stuff. Uh, I am going to, ch I'm chatting with him one-on-one -on -one tomorrow just to like, just to understand, you know, whatever it is, like get, get a deeper dive into some of these things. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, I know he mentioned that there's some things we can improve on the resolver side, and make things simpler and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we'll see. Depending on how much work that is, it's worth doing and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think he he seemed to he he seemed to have dived pretty deep on that and had some good ideas and I think some of them should be. Um, I think he said he he'd be willing to kind of help implement some of that as well. Okay, awesome. Right. Okay. Um, Looking through the open issues. And we were talking through the 1.0 stuff still? Or was that completed? No, we went, it's not completed yet. So I think a few, uh, let me bring up the, so we came out with this list from last time. Um, let me paste it into. There's a there's a thing on REST API versioning, but did, did someone add this one? We can talk about that first. Wait, did someone at the REST API versioning stuff? Oh wait, sorry, I'm looking at. Yeah, I think we that was last week. No, oh, sorry, I, 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 yeah, I pasted in the wrong. <laughs> oh, this doc is too big. Um, sorry. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong date. Um. So last last time we talked about 1.0. Um, we kind of listed out these requirements so far um and i think green is we have them and yellow is that um we are making progress on them so um can everyone see the i i paste it in the doc um maybe it helps if i share this uh, one second so green is done right Sorry. Green is done. Okay. Yellow is things that we we think that we should do. Uh sorry. Yellow are things that that we are making progress on right now. So um persistent uh, handling a large and sorry. Okay. Wasn't there wasn't there more things? Uh just scrolling down the agenda. There's like collectors so, and certifiers. Do we need all that this stuff? I think this was kind of like what we were discussing and brainstorming the different parts of it. Okay. Um, and then we tried to get to um, kind okay. of Actual. more actionable, actionable things. Issues. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think this is what we have as like the actionable issues and the hope is uh, maybe this is it's not complete um but the hope is like once we get all these things things to green um uh, we should be in decent shape to 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 say 1.0 um so So I think the the major ones is one scalability to use cases that we want to support, um, the collect subscriber story, mm -hmm. and also API stability. 
and also like how we want people to use um not API not only API stability but like dip, like how how we want people to use the versions um you know both from the API perspective but also from the deployment perspective For the um, API um, changes on, on the REST API, at least, I think we could try out the, that process, that cycle, before actually um, going to going to one point um, and 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 see if it if it if it just works well, if it's smooth. So I can I can put together maybe like a or add it to the README. Um, the 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 process and we can try to follow that for a bit. I, I think you talked about the process last last week, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I think we did. I think we it sounded like we have consensus on that. I think so. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so I think based on that, um, so the next one follow up. Um, if I think Marco, you said you create a PR for this on the readme, so we can review that. Um, going back up, handling large inputs. You know, this is stuff that Alistair um, and I think Path, Path and Jeff, you guys were looking at and testing with as well. Um, the end user 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 journey is just something I've been like Ben myself and Abisak have been working on. Um, collects up. I know we said that we had we would want to figure out a story around this. Um, before one point oh, um, this is something that we have probably have to discuss a little <coughs> bit further. Um, and the other one that. Um, I think Jeff said that he's looking to backward compatibility with moving with version upgrades and schema changes, which is, I guess, part of this is the deployment story. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so on the collector subscriber side, are we lumping that in with the first one? Or are we just going ahead? We, we we already have a bullet here that we need to come up with a stability story. Lump, what do you mean by lumping it with the first one? Uh, so the first one where it was uh, large inputs, essentially. Um, or is that only referring to the back end? I think that's referring to the, the back end. Okay. Um, but if we think that the C sub should be included in that, um, we could, but I think this also determines whether we want the C sub to kind of be like a um, a supported and a um, yeah, whether it's something that we want to include as one point or as this is something that you can use in production. Yeah, I mean, one of the things with the the changes that Parth did for you know ingesting bones and um uh things like that on in oh, okay so that that doesn't eliminate needs for c sub that's just certifier um i guess the i guess there's architectural changes we could make here too um that kind of work around the c sub i mean i, mean, I think i think it needs to be supported i think this the story of like having depths dev and um, whatever the OCI, 
like needs to be there for 1.0. It's just we need to figure out what the what the this you know how it's going to work, I guess, or, or what we're going to we're going to call it. Yeah, I'm also wondering whether it can be something that like is the interface clean in the sense of just the C sub and let's say we say C sub and OCI collector and C sub and depth of depth collector are kind of treated as an experimental add on bundle of the deployment. <laughs> um, then it's possible that. Oh, well, not really, because the ingester is the top of the C sub. Yeah, I mean, if we did everything in ingestion, like with the, the recent changes for OSV and clearly defined, like we could potentially have that as a stopgap. Especially for depth dev, like I think depth dev shouldn't be experimental. Um, we kind of talk about it a lot in all of our um, demonstrations and and presentations. Um, I guess what I'm saying is we could so, either so fix it's... we could either come up with like a rearchitecture for C sub, or we could do something as kind of a workaround. But it's part of like the fact that you know the the whole. Um, deployment being able to support a large amount of data, essentially. I think that's fair. Um, so I think from what I understand, <clears throat> would our framing be that um, you can do like with OSB and clearly define, you know, you can gather all these materials as you're doing the ingestion. Um, but you know, this will work if you're ingesting small amount of data, if you really want to scale up, um, and also kind of continuously augment your, your, I think two stories, like one is the scale. If you're going to scale up, you don't want to, like, you're going to ingest let's say a million documents every week or something like that, then you, you, you don't want to always be doing this call uh, for every single document in Jess. And then part two of that is to say also that you want to get new information whenever the information is available in in depth or depth or, or OCI. Oh, I mean, so you're saying keep everything as a certifier? You're saying drop the collector subscriber? What are you trying to say, I guess? I think with with the proposal to make it like OS, like, um, what do we want to call it? Um, like just in time augmentation with what OSB mm -hmm. and, 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 um, as it finds doing, um, this should ideally hit 80% of the use cases. So do the same thing for depth.dev that you're saying? I think that's or... that's what Jeff is proposing, right? And then like we, we work oh, on the longer right? term story for how to scale, how to scale this just in time augmentation. <clears throat> But also, like, just in that augmentation doesn't has gaps, right? Like, if there's new information in depth of depth, you're not gonna you're not gonna update the graph. Yeah, but um, even with the C sub, it's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's only checking the graph whenever there's an ingestion and a new uh, pearl has been put in the C sub for the same pearl. Well. I yeah, I think by design, my original thinking was like there would be a bit of like expiry for every entry, so we just like keep checking periodically. Oh, I um, see. But yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. But I like that idea where then this gives us free reign to kind of take our time to redesign the C sub to to 
handle the other like 20% of use cases, which are not as common. And we, we don't have to particularly rush through that. So make it a certifier at this point? So have a dev.dev certifier then? I don't think it needs to be a certifier, but um, it could probably even use all the same code, but just mm -hmm. all be in the same running in one service, right? Like it's That's just... It. You know, essentially there's yeah. a proto existing that's like, here's a Perl and it could just be passing that from the ingester to, you know, the depths dev collector in the same service, just, 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 uh, instantiating that or, or executing that, um, on ingestion so that we don't have to have the C sub as a standalone thing. Um, so do we. Do we need it to rerun though? Like how OSC uh, no. other things run or no? Not this no. one? No. no. Okay. I guess the question is like for most people that most users that we know for like, would this kind of just in time augmentation be good enough for them? I think I mean, the I think answer that, should be yes, right? I think yes. I, th I mean, you know, so, like you're going to be spending the resources somewhere doing these queries to depth dev based on everything you ingest, whether it happens in the ingester or a separate service. I don't think that's that consequential unless the user is trying to run Guac 1 um, and they haven't set up the ingester. And then that's like significantly slowing down their, their pipeline or wherever they're running Guac 1. Um, and I think the answer there is, yeah, you should use an adjuster <laughs> and uh, uh, go out collect. Yeah. And we can so easily, it's... like, sorry. So is, is this kind of similar to the um, ingest uh, vulnerabilities on ingestion and like licenses on ingestion? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is if we did that with blocking... depths dev, we essentially could avoid this whole collect. C sub uh, rearchitecting. It's gonna slow down ingestion even more, though, right? That's right. That's thing. that's what I'm saying. It's like okay, you're running ingestion in a cluster or you know a, a deployment outside of yeah. the like l like let's say the the workflow or the the pipe build pipeline, and you know that has to happen at some point. Like there's you know you're just moving around resources. Like all this takes the same amount of time. <laughs> whether it's asynchronous or synchronous. I guess the d delay would be like, um, you know, the original, you know, the nodes showing up in the graph all at once or, you know, essentially eventual consistency <laughs> with the yeah, the S bomb yeah. showing up first and the depth stuff showing up later. Right. But I don't know. Um, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's not a major change, right? Because the ingester already knows about the pearls. So like, that's what I do currently for the OSV and other things. OSV and clearly defines is just using the pearls and it's just querying them on ingestion. So I can do the same thing for devs.dev if need be. But uh, so it's not you know you can just use existing code to 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 do it all. Yeah, I was just saying we even have the C the C sub interface as well defined. It would just all be started up yeah, in right. a single process, right? Do you even need the C sub anymore then? But it's just already in an interface that you have to go from the ingester to the collectors. They could just all be. you know, instantiated, right? What is the CSUB? What is the collector interface? I guess it's G a gRPC, but it's already, it's taking protos. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of just going to be doing it whenever. Basically the, the, the CSUB collector flow becomes part of the ingester. Yeah. 
I think an interesting question though is like the 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 more that I think about this is kind of like oh yeah we're we're trying to like if we end up with so called the right way to do it then we would end up with basically something like the seesaw flow except that we can make it more efficient um so I think that's two two parts of this one of it is can we have a stopgap to get to 1.0 and then kind of defer the CSUP design architecture problem so that we can get to 1.0 faster. Um, and I the, the major concerns I'm hearing um, is about ingestion time. So I think the question is, um, what is the the goal with ingestion times that we want to hit, and is there a story that we can we can have with with without the collect subscriber that we can we can do that? I guess we have no baseline. Like, what are our users expecting? Right. It's like, hey, I want the ingestion to be done in ten seconds, or like, are they like, oh, it's okay if it's done in a minute or two? Like, I don't need the S bomb. Like, I don't need that information right away. Like if it takes two minutes or something, that's fine. So like, I mean, that's a good question for the community call also. It's like, what, is, what are the users expecting? Like, I don't think we have an understanding of that. Like, what, what, is the, what is considered baseline? Like, hey, this is the target we should be meeting, right? We never actually kind of figured that out. We just been like, hey, let's just optimize, optimize, optimize. Let's just get it as fast as possible. But what is the, what is something that is, people are okay with in terms of ingestion times. We, with some of the partners that you guys have been working on, what has this been? Oh, I think Michael. Oh, uh, no, yeah, no, I was just gonna say, I think really it, it, it comes back to that, that problem of we need to figure out who the user is. Um, like if we, it, like it's gonna look very different, right? If somebody's like, Oh yeah, we're, you know, if the majority of people we speak to are like, yeah, we're ingesting, you know, figure 30 S-bombs a week versus, oh, we're ingesting somewhere on the order of 30,000 S-bombs a week. Um, that, that, like, so that's going to be very, very different. Now, I think it's more on the 30 S-bombs a week than the 30,000. But I do think that if we don't have that information of like the, the actual user of Guac and what they're looking for, um, it's going to be hard to, to kind of gauge so i would say like yeah let's kind of talk to some of those those uh those users today um and kind of uh, uh get some of that yeah maybe um path we have we have the chat with microsoft later today maybe we can ask them what they expected mm -hmm. i see um it might be a good question to add to the the user you know the we, user we do have some questions them. I think we, we do have it in that. Oh, you do? Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, and the other interesting uh, question to ask about ingestion is like, what does ingestion being done mean? Because, you know, does that mean, again, like, does that mean that the, the S-bomb itself is there or, you know, that we've checked for vulnerabilities? Because some people want to know, do I have vulnerabilities, right? And so like the ingestion, you know, the ingestion means that OSV has been run as well, or whatever else that they want to see. Um, so like slowing down ingestion to query OSV, is that really slowing down ingestion or is that just doing it all at once? <laughs> all right. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing, right? Like, I guess if they don't care about depths.dev, they don't have to run depths.dev, right? Right. So. Yeah, and maybe we can not... we can have that as a default, right? And then, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing for everything. You can like the, disable it if you don't want it, or I think it, it's it, disabled CSUP... by disabled by default. Sorry, yeah. Is the C sub Q persistent? No, because it's in memory. Oh, it's in memory. Okay, yeah. So it's so that's what I'm saying. I, I I don't see the need to use a C sub interface or any of that stuff. Like on if we're doing it on ingestion, 
we already have the pearls um, on ingestion that are going to be passed to the C sub. So right there at the ingester level, you can just query devs.dev and be done with it. You don't have to do, you don't have to, you know, have C sub interface or do anything else like this is called a collector and be done. You still need like that support certifier and where it's like new information comes in, but I don't think many people right now care about that. Like I, I guess like the thing is like, oh yeah, it depth of depth implements a new feature that people want to rerun some of those things. Uh, What is this, Jeff? Did you post? Uh, it looks like uh, it's the data sources, the interface that can just be piped in. So I, I do have some concerns about the OCI, Joe, because is the OCI bone being used? Like I have never used it. I don't know if anybody's ever used it, actually. <laughs> but they we've never really done problem. much testing. Much we've never done much testing with the OCI one. The only like the only thing we really tested is the devs.dev. Like the OCI one has really been mostly untested. So what we're saying now is basically all collectors are static configuration or file based configuration. You can update it if you want to restart the collector. But that's how they currently are, right? There's no way of uh, dynamically changing them. Well, with the C sub, you can. I don't think that's uh can we? Uh -huh. Yeah. You can spin up other collectors? Or no, like change? the collector uses the data source as the uh, the configuration. But I don't think this is widely used anyway, so it may not be an issue. Like there are some integration points that still require. It. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but but then again, I think that falls into the C sub, right? So if we wanna, <clears throat> if we wanna take our time to redesign the C sub to, you know, be a bit more robust to kind of have a pop sub queue, do all those things. Um, we're just talking about scope of one point if no one's asking for it, then I think we can delay it to later. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Is that something you have time to do, Brennan? Um, to delete the C's up? <laughs> no, like the, oh. not rewrite it, but like the, the, the re you know, redesign the, of the C's up. No, not the redesign, just the, the, you know, for the uh, workaround for, for V1. So that would be calling the, the, um, Depths of dev and um, I guess OCI doesn't really make sense, right? Um, well, we could, like you said, if it's based on the source, right? If the source is pointing to a different repository or something, right? Then it could be, it could still work that way. 
Yeah, I think it gets a bit messy because we we have to configure the all the credentials on the interface, which is fine. It may not be bad. Um, if they're stored as environment variables or something, maybe yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean the configuration. I think that's less bad. <laughs> um, um. I think I'd be more comfortable just saying depth of depth. I I'm I'm a little bit anything that's like publicly accessible. Yeah. I think I would be comfortable to say that we can do an ingester. Anything that requires credential, I'd be a little bit more um concerned. Yeah, that makes sense. No, I think just Dev is okay for now. Again, I don't know if anybody uses the OCI one. Like I, I've seen people collect from OCI, right? Like using a like a collector from the initial run, but never from the C sub. I mean, I that's Microsoft fine, right? again. I... Microsoft again might be the one to ask again for this, and we have, we can talk to them this afternoon. Okay, like, hey, is this something and... you're, you're going to use? Like we can we can deprecate the C sub service, but the data source like Jeff mentioned, like they can still use the file data source. Yeah. yeah. The only the only other collector that uses that data source is the GitHub one. Um, I'm not sure what it uses it for. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone's using C sub for that though. Maybe. Well, it's an it's an option you can configure it. I, I assume that if it finds a if it finds a oh, actually, a Git repo, it tries to go to GitHub. Yeah, that yeah, that's a good one because like basically, yeah. I think finding the release information and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Which technically could also be a certifier, right? Could be, but I'm just saying for wiring up the ingester directly to collectors that use data sources, like the interface is already there for that one. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it requires, if it's specific um, GitHub credentials to use. If it's going to run out of quota or whatever. Yeah, that one needs a token as well. I think that falls into the similar category of OCI collectors. Because I I I imagine like you don't wanna collect the whole Docker Hub if you're just using like Ubuntu or something like that. Um I mean, I think some of those features we could. Yeah, I, I guess are they asked for? Is that critical to any of our user journeys that we want to present, right? So like, when was this, when was the date of this thing released? Um, for example, if you want to use big time, uh, So I guess are we okay with saying that we're gonna leave out the information um for this release and then depth of depth? You know, I think I think I probably could try and find some time. Um it doesn't sound too bad if we can reuse most of the code. Um Yeah. I think that makes sense. And then we re architecture it for after 1.0. It shouldn't be a blocker.
Okay, that sounds good. Um, I think I'll write out maybe like a few sentences on. What we. Uh, I think it's fine. Like I think a lot of the get the good stuff maybe. I would almost even say, maybe depth of depth should handle that as well, right? Um. I mean, if it has the information, then yes. Yeah, like honestly, may, maybe we, we should just say like the co the entire collect subscriber ecosystem for open source should be depth of depth. <laughs> like technically, if you think about it, that's kind of what they do, right? Yeah. Um, the only tricky part is what we're saying is you're missing out on doing this for your own infrastructure. But in the in this case, it sounds like what we're saying is like yeah, just ingest ingest your entire infrastructure because it's not that big. Um, and for everything else, you know, we say that depth so depth should be the one that that does this, and we frame it that way. Yeah, I think that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me write a yeah, let me let me write a a small like one pager um about what our proposal is and then we can review it. We can see what the depths of that folks say. Um, oh, Jeff, Jeff, do you have thoughts on that? We can discuss uh, this more next time also. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the depth side dev uh, folks, what happened to the Pearl or the Go stuff? Uh, Pearl lookup for the Go module names? Containing uppercase letters, like what is that? Like, is this stuck in limbo forever? <laughs> so, uh, on at least the current thinking is that, um, so Dustin is gonna get involved with the the pull, the pull committee, and try okay. and bring that up as like things that we have to fix. Okay, All right, yeah. Yeah, as long as someone's like <laughs> someone's working on it, I think that's good. Because yeah, we're missing information otherwise that we can't query. Like the information's there, we just don't get it. All right. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the depth of depth again, I think I can take a look at it. Um it won't be immediate. I'll be doing this in my free time. So um cool. Well I'm glad we 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 I feel like we have fuzzy enough consensus around this topic. So good discussion. Um, so I'm gonna now mark this as yellow. Um, and okay. Um, sounds like yeah. I think we make good progress on this. So. Uh, we have five minutes left for anything else. That's it. Uh, I'm going to review some of the PRs that are open, uh, but I think that's about it. Yeah, Marco, if you can take a look at that.
the the REST API one. Yep, would that be good? The rate limit one is also a good one to get in. So if anybody has time to review that one. Uh, I think Jeff reviewed it already. So if there's any other changes you want to make to that one. I also saw the deletion, the deletion one um, from Nathan. Yeah, for the key value. Uh, I think he has to really, um, is there something that we're we are looking to? I would need, I would I need some changes. Yeah. Yeah. But is there something that we're looking to implement throughout all predicates or just like a few? Like what's, uh, what's the overall plan? So last time one? last time we talked about it, it was, uh, you know, we, I think we, we decided it was this has SBOM, has Salsa, and Certified Vuln. Those three. That's what we decided to do. Okay. There could be certify legal now is another one because technically uh, clearly defined is a certifier, right? Meaning it's going to keep adding information in again and again. So that could be another one that we could add certify legal deletion. Okay, so this this is this is just a too much data use case, right? Correct. Yeah, Un unneeded data. If you kind of just start deleting. Yeah. And then in the has SBOM case, right, it's going to delete all the dependencies and occurrences that came with it. Yeah. Uh, Alistair had some thoughts on the Postgres one, um, on the soft delete. So I, if, if Nathan's going to work on that, maybe we'll chatting with Alistair. Oh, I mean, he's, he did the key value one at the, that's just for consistency case, case uh, sake. Okay. Uh, to keep both the in-memory and ent up to date, right? That was the reason. Yeah. Cool. But if you haven't done certified, certified legal might be a good one to do. That's the only other one I can think of. That's good. Cool. All right. I guess we all know. And I mean, oh, uh, and so I want to real quick. How important is the end of life? Is that something that's like, hey, that's, we want that in Guac or not? I know uh, Ben uh, opened this issue, and some people, one guy asked about it in, in uh, Slack also at support for end of life. That's a priority. Oh, like saying that uh, software is end of life? Yeah. Um... I guess we market as has metadata or something. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. Do we? I and I we can just probably make it. Uh... I mean, it is technically a bottom. Maybe you just need a playbook to tell people how to use it. What do you mean? The has metadata can do this, right? Yeah, we just gotta add it, but. Do we do we need to make like a certifier? I don't, I don't think a certifier, but like maybe collector. I I don't think so. I think it has metadata and uh, certified bad. If you want to say like this is out of life now and I want to remove everything that depends on it, you certify bad and you go from there. Mm -hmm. But how is that how is that done? Manually, you mean? Yeah. Okay. So I think not actually. Or... I think the one argument for having a certifier for it is that the information could change over time. Like the EOL date might be, you know, August 12th of 2024, and then it gets moved out three months because people keep pushing back, you know, like, is a, you know, I think like the Python 2 EOL got kicked back several times, things like that. So, you know, capturing that up-to-date information might be good. So yeah, that's it sounds like... Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds like this warrants more discussion, so we can continue this next week. Um, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. If you want to see on the chat, it's okay, but I got to go. <laughs> yeah.